Here I'm going to quickly show you how to get started on your Minesweeper application and to show you a working version of the program. Here I have my Minesweeper application. Notice I've got a, a grid of, of buttons that effectively act as my, my mine fill, right? And then I have a text field that shows the number of unexposed mines that are left in the mine field. So you notice if I hit a if I hit a mine, it'll blow up. The user can select new game, which will um, create a new mine field and clear the board. The user can start over again. Um, the user can drop flags onto the mine field. And, and the user can choose different levels. So you can see it starts out in beginner level. You can go up to higher levels, which resizes the window in the mine field. And, gives us uh, a larger and more complicated playing area. For this project, you're only required to do the beginner level, but I'll show you in later videos how to actually do the, the other level. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and fire up Xcode and go ahead and, and create a new project. And so you want to choose Cocoa application under Mac OS 10. Don't, don't choose application under iOS unless you want to make a version for the iPhone or iPad. For this class, you're going to do a, a Mac OS 10 Cocoa application. So I'm going to choose that. So then we're going to go ahead and choose a, a name for the project called Minesweeper. And I'm going to, similarly, I'm going to do the same thing for the class prefix. This is used when we create new files that will automatically use this Minesweeper as a prefix for newly named files, which is a nice default. And make sure automatic reference counting is selected um, and not core data. So we'll be using automatic reference counting for our memory management, which makes things a lot easier. Do not use core data. That'll make things more complicated for this project. Um, we're not going to do any unit testing. So, so there, we're off and running. Um, you can save this wherever you like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just for now, just go and save it on my desktop. Um, I'm going to leave the uh, checkbox unchecked for creating a local Git repository. So I'm going to show you later. I'll show you how to create your own Git repository manually. If you, if you want to go ahead and click that, that's okay. But I'm going to leave it unclicked and do that manually later. So we'll go ahead and create a new project, right? So this will create a new template for us for a new Cocoa application. You're going to see over here on the left that um, it it already creates one class for your mind for your application delegate and you see that there's already a nib file so go ahead and select the nib file because this is where we're going to place our user interface components so you can so when I click on it it brings up the interface builder editor in Xcode so over on the left you get a view of the elements in your nib file in sort of a hierarchical view and and over here on the right you'll actually have a the visual display of the objects that are the visual objects that are in your nib file. Right now I've got main menu selected and you can see that uh, later on when I want to edit the menu I can do that here. So I'm going to select the window. So this is going to be the main window, actually the only window for my application. So this is where I'm going to start by laying out components. So I'm going to go over here in the inspector, the bottom of the inspector under the object library. I'm going to start by go finding a button. I'm going to start by building my minefield and I'm going to begin by, by, by using a button. There's all kinds of different buttons, and probably the most appropriate one to choose from here is this nice square button. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to drag it on here. So this is going to be the prototype button for my entire minefield. So, so with that selected, I'm going to go over to the inspector and choose the size inspector, which looks like a little uh, ruler up here on the tab here. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to go ahead and resize, with it selected, I'm going to go ahead and resize it. I'm going to change its size to 30 by 30, which will be pretty close to what I want. And the other thing about this is is you'll notice that it's a push, it's a momentary push in button. But just to demonstrate what that means, if I go ahead and, and go into the editor and, and simulate my application, my one button application, you can see at the button, I click on it and, and it's selected and it's immediately unselected. So that, that's the typical way that you want buttons to behave. But we actually want to change, change the behavior of the button so that when we press it, it actually stays selected. So I'm going to select that button again in, in IV here, and I'm going to change its type to push on, push off. 
So I'm going to save that and go ahead and go back into the simulator. And now you can see when I push the button, it, it stays on. And when I push it again, it goes off, which is exactly the behavior that we want for our buttons in our minefield. Of course, we'll disable the button once the user presses it, but we want it to stay selected once the user is selected, okay? So you, what's interesting, if you go to the inspector, so if I select this button, go over to the inspector, and look at the class identity inspector, you're gonna see that the name of this, that the type of this object is an NS button. So what I'm actually gonna, which is a, a fairly heavyweight objects. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to convert this into an, a matrix of buttons, and this matrix of buttons is going to be my minefield. So with so with my my buttons selected. And by the way, I could select it over here, or I could select it directly. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'm going to go up to the editor, and I'm going to go embed in matrix. So I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed this button into a matrix. So now you're going to see its class name is now, it's no longer an NS button, it's now a matrix. As a matter of fact, if I go to the identity inspector, or the, yeah, the attributes inspector, you can see what actually what I have now is a one by one matrix of button cells. So for the beginner's level, what we want is actually a 10 by 10 matrix. So I'm going to change these to be the number of rows, number of columns to be 10 by 10. So I'm going to just resize it for now, kind of put it in the center. And you can see now I've got my 10 by 10 matrix of buttons. And I'll go ahead and save that and run that again in the simulator. And you can see now the buttons stay selected as I press them. And so that's effectively going to be our minefield. So I'll go ahead and quit the simulator. So now I can resize my window here. I'm going to go ahead and add the other components that I need. So one of the things I'm going to need is a push down button. So I'm going to go back over here into my object library and see if I can find a push down button or a pop. I guess it's a pop up button. Ah, there we go. I'm going to grab that and slide that in here. And I'm going to go ahead and if I click on this, I'm going to go ahead and change the first item to beginner. And I, you know, of course, I could do this. I could do this directly by double clicking here. Go change this to inter intermediate, or I could select it here. I could edit it over here in the in the identity inspector. So this is going to be um, advanced, advanced. And actually, I want. So by default, it came up with three levels. I would actually, I actually want a fourth level for expert. I could go over here and and find a menu item in the inspector, or I can just, I can just duplicate the one that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, edit, edit, copy, edit, paste, and boom, I got another one. So I'm going to change that to expert, and click away, and then lo and behold, there I have my pop up button. Okay, so there's going to be the, the, and I'm going to make sure that by default it's set on beginner, and I'm going to I'm going to resize it, make it a little bit bigger so that intermediate shows up when we select intermediate. All right, so now I need a new game button. I'm going to go up to the top, up here in the object library again, and find oh, there's a a, a rounded rectangle button that looks like a probably a good button to choose. I'm going to choose that and drag it on here. Notice I, I tend to follow the, the, the various blue guidelines that are suggested as I drag it around. And I'm going to change the title of this button to New Game. And very good. So there's going to be my New Game button. And now I'm going to need a text field. Go find a text field down here. And I'm going to drag that up here. You know, size it maybe like I want it. Now, so I'm, this is where I'm going to use to display the score. So I'm going to go ahead and just, just so I get the font and, and everything adjusted like I like, I'm going to go ahead and just put a dummy score in of 999 in right now. And so I'm going to select that and I'm going to make sure that that text is centered and I'm going to make the font just a little bit bigger. How about uh, 16 looks fine. Maybe make that just a tad smaller. Make it, maybe I can get it to fit nicely here. Um, anyway, so there's actually one other nice component I want to grab. 
Where is a vertical separator, which is way down? Oh, there it is, a horizontal line separator. So I'm going to grab that and drag it on here. And okay, there we go. And so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Try to yeah, make things kind of fit nicely. Kind of arrange my field. Now I'm going to I'm going to grab and select everything. I'm going to drag it up into the corner. And there we go. So there's there's essentially our user interface components. I'm going to size the window to fit nice and snugly around that. Go ahead and save. Now let's go ahead and go to uh, simulate our document. And you can see one of the things is we don't we don't want the user to be able to edit the score. So that's something we're going to have to change. We're just using this to display the score. Uh, rather than yeah we can yeah things seem to work much like we want them to. One, another thing we're going to want to change is the resize behavior. That's really not the resize behavior that we want, but um, actually we're going to disable both the resize and and for now we're, we're only going to programmatically resize when they choose different levels. So first of all, let's for now let's go ahead and disable the text field so they can't edit the score. So I'm going to quit the simulator. I'm going to select the text field, and over in the Attributes Expector, probably if I go down, yeah, Behavior under Editable, I'm going to change that to None. And also, if I select the whole window, I'm going to go over and unclick Resize and unclick Close. So I don't want the user to be able to resize the window or close it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save, and let's go ahead and simulate the document that we have so far. And you can see the user, they can they can do that, they can iconize, but they they and they can't edit the text field, they can't close it, and there's no way to resize it. Um, but it looks like we're off a little bit on on this. It looks like I could res my window's not resized right, so I'm gonna go fix that. Looks like I'm just a hair off on this. I want this to be the same size on both sides. That's interesting. Does it look like it is That's to me? So let me, um, some of my new new game button got resized. So I'll fiddle with that a little bit. So, so you can fiddle with these forever, trying to get them just like you like them. Well, we'll run run with that for now. So, so I'll go ahead and and simulate it again. Now, notice they can't click, they can't hit the editor button. They can, and looks like we're not quite like I like it, but close enough for now. So, go ahead and quit the simulator. Actually, you can go ahead and run the application. If I click on Run, it will actually compile and build application and, and launch it. And you can see it actually brings up a menu and, and everything for this. So um, but you can see here's the application actually running. Doesn't really do much yet, but that's that's pretty much um, for now going to be our beginning level uh, user components for this. So. So the next video will actually continue with this and add a, add a controller to it.